Hey guys, it's Troy here, and yeah, I'm doing another vintage pen video. I really had no plans to do another vintage video. Actually, the, the pen I was planning on doing next for a video is a modern pen, but I ran across the opportunity to purchase a couple of pens. These ones right here. Now, I really enjoy vintage pens, as you well know. These all three are the same branded pen. Belmont, B-E-L-M-O-N-T. Now, a little bit about Belmont. Belmont is a store brand, and they are produced for retail, or were produced for retail, exclusively through Rexall Drug Stores. I don't know if you remember Rexall Drugs. I certainly do. We had one in my hometown. And, uh, during the 1920s or so, they were selling fountain pens, and they had two different brands. Rexall was a cooperative of independent pharmacists who got together, about 40 of them, based out of Boston, Massachusetts, in around 1903. And one of the things they decided to do was have an in-house brand, much like was done with Sears and Roebuck or Montgomery Wards, that kind of thing. So, these are some of their pens. I already had a Belmont. This one was in my collection, a nice jade celluloid that I picked up through uh, Peyton Street Pens several years back. And uh, I've enjoyed that one, and it's been in my collection, like I said, for several years. Recently, another pen collector was selling off some of his pens on Instagram. And... When I saw the price on these and what they were, only $35 each. I was like, "You are you kidding me? Just 35 bucks? Even if they were in really bad condition, $35 would do it for me. Uh, so I picked these up for $35 a piece. Both of them Belmont, black chased, hard rubber, so probably from the 1920s or so. Now, there were two different brands that were put out by Rexall. One was Monogram and the other Belmont. I do not have any monogram pens in my collection, uh, but these pens were made, both speaking of both Belmont and Monogram, by the National Pen uh, Products Company, Sterling Pen Company, the Boston Pen Company, Moore and wherever, especially uh, Moore wherever in Boston in the celluloids. So, I've got now three. This is the one that I've had previously. This was restored and, like I said, sold through... Peyton Street pens. It's a, still a really good looking pen. Probably from the 1920s or late 20s or 30s. And it's got a warranted nib. Now, I told you about warranted nibs when I did my video recently on the Eclipse fountain pen, where basically warranted was not a brand, but was more of a seal to, to guarantee you that you are getting the 14 karat, usually 14 karat gold nib that came with the pen. Out of these two, so far, I have only inked up this one, and I may just ink up this one before I get done with this video. Uh, they are very similar. You can, you can tell that these two pens are obviously a different size. You can tell with this one too, though, it was also a fairly short pen. So these would be more like a vest pocket size, or just plain smaller for people to use, and both of these are ring top pens. So you can hook these on to a lanyard or something similar to that. Uh, but both of these still excellent chasing on them. And you can see the Belmont brand is still, the imprint is still pretty good on this one. I mean, they're not perfect. They've got some scuffs, but I mean, we're talking a, a century old pen here. And this red cat probably could use just a little bit of tender loving care, but it's still in really good shape. That little bit of discoloration may be an ink stain, I'm not sure. Um, but this particular nib, when you look at it, here, I'll try to get you a better close-up of it. Uh, but this one says 14C for carat by the MNC Limited out of Birmingham, England Company. So MNC Limited. I'm not really familiar with them. I'm going to have to actually look them up a little bit. Uh, but obviously an English made nib compared to this one here from about the same time period. A little bit different in its look. 
Still a really good imprint for that Belmont brand. And you open this one up. This one actually does have a warranted nib right there. You can see that. One of the reasons I did not ink up that other one, one of the cool things I like about these, and yeah, you can see there's a little bit of tarnish maybe on that lever, but what I like about these particular levers is unlike a lot of other levers, this little lever actually locks down, which I find very convenient. So if I get my fingernail underneath, you lift your lever. I didn't want to do that while I had ink in it, but uh, you can see, I get a little bit of lint off from or hair off from that thing, uh, but you can see it looks just a little different than a lot of other levers, and when you close it, this one actually has a nice little snap lock into place. So you press it down, there, and it snaps right into place. So that's one thing I did like about this particular pen. The other neat thing is, and I might as well just use this one because it's not inked up, when you go to use them and post them, because I generally don't like little short pens, but when you post it, it actually becomes a really good length of pen in the hand. I've got some of that with modern day pens. Um, uh, think Pilot Elite is a really good example, how they're really too short uh, when you go to pull them out, but when you post it, it's not so bad in the hand. Yes, they're a little narrower, because that kind of was the style of the size choice back in the day. A little narrower, narrower here in the section and something akin to like a number two Waterman nib, that about that size. This one, like I, I showed you earlier, does have that warranted nib, and it's about the same size there. There's a good shot of the feed underneath. The threads are still in really good condition, chasing still in excellent condition. The lever still works great with the same kind of little lockdown lever mechanism there. So, so far, so good. I do not have this one inked up to show you the difference, but I will show you. You could tell a different company produced this, definitely a different style, different style lever with a little spoon there, and you can see that. Uh, you know, the celluloid with a clip as opposed to the others that have no clip on it and a gold plated ring band uh, rings right there around the cap band with a flat top. So here you're, you're looking more like a Schaefer. As a matter of fact, um, somebody from the Boston Pen Company used to work for Schaefer and that would explain possibly why you have this. It looks like a Schaefer flat top, especially with a jade celluloid, which to me are some of my absolute favorites. And I am not a big fan of green, but jade celluloids from the 1920s, 1930s are, to me, some of my absolute favorite celluloids that are out there. All right, since you saw that first part, I have inked up the, uh, the second Belmont, and you can see, I don't know why I, I torture myself like this, I put in some Parker Quink, the red stuff, this permanent red ink, which is going to be a pain to clean up um, at a later date, because uh, trying to get red ink, oh, it just never seems to go away when you're cleaning up, especially a lever filler. And in the other one, I put in this, the washable blue Quink. Both of these I picked up uh, bottles from Crazy Allen when I was at the DC Pen Show just a little while ago. And I've got some old Parker Quinks and a bunch of Watermans here in my collection, even some vintage of both. And these are, uh, you know, older bottles of ink. So well, I figured I'd go ahead and show you how these write. And there was a difference. One of the things I ran across with this one, one of the reasons I've got, you know, a lot of red on my hand is not necessarily from the inking, but from doing a time alignment. I go ahead and I just... I don't check time alignment usually before I ink up a pen. I usually go ahead up and ink it up and then try to write with it and then go, ooh, yes, this, this could be better, so whip out my loop. And I found out that this one was just out of alignment. So I was able to do a quick time alignment and it does write better since then and writes a lot more fluid since I 
played with a nib just for a couple of minutes. I have not done any smoothing other than a time alignment. And in this one here, it writes fairly well also. So let's go ahead and show you how these ones write. Now, like I said, these are fairly, they're fairly small. They're smaller than I prefer. However, you know, I take pens pretty much as they are. And like I said, on this deal here, when you go ahead and you post it, it actually makes it halfway decent. As a matter of fact, this one almost makes it a little longer than I like. However, I'm still happy, especially for the price I paid. I mean, come on, 35 bucks? Awesome. So let us put nib to paper. So we're talking about a Belmont. A Belmont B, black, chased, hard, rubber, ring top. You know, it was by Rexall. Sure, they weren't the manufacturer, but it was made for Rexall for distribution. So this is probably from the 1920s or so. Especially with the black chased hard rubber, that was very common from that era. That's why I put it into the 20s. And you know, Rexall drugs started in 1903, and they started to sell celluloids in the late 20s uh, through Rexall. That's just from my reading. That's why I'm putting these probably in the 1920s. And I put in some Parker Quink washable blue. This particular pen has the nib that says warranted on it. So it's supposed to be what? A 14K nib? Well, let's go see how well that works. Big fat line. Nice flex. You get a good amount of feedback on it. It is not the um, smoothest nib in the world. However, it is still very acceptable in my opinion. I would, I really wouldn't try to do any smoothing on this one just because I'm happy with the way it performs. So let's try out the other one. The other one, I don't know as though I have ever had a pen by uh, that had a nib by MNC limited. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. And like I said, this is the one that I had to do a little bit of work on the nib. So this is another Belmont. Black chased hard rubber. And I will tell you, this nib writes so much better. If you have a pen that it writes really scratchy or railroads or just doesn't do the job. Sometimes all you need is a loop and a couple of fingers and you can manipulate that nib, get the alignment and it works much much better. So also a 1920s in my estimation and I use some of the Parker Quink and this was the permanent no, it didn't do that loop very well. Permanent red. Does not do well when you it'll railroad really easily when you try to do that. But I will say, it is a lot smoother than it was. If you go slow, you can get some line variation until you railroad. So that then you get it writing again. You're seeing it as I'm seeing it pretty much for the first time, except for when I just did an alignment, before and after an alignment, and I said, okay, that's better. As a matter of fact, I can show you how much I actually did. I did it on the back of an old envelope. You know, this is, uh, this is what I did first with the, the blue earlier today. Because so I filled it up several hours ago, started playing with it. And this is what I did on the same back of an envelope 
of some junk mail that was laying here on my desk and this is what it showed up with at first and this was the time after time alignment here there was a big difference don't need to show you the junk mail and some of the other notes that I've written on that I had a to-do list besides that um, but um, anyway warranted nib and this was the uh, the British made nib so I do see a difference in the two I've never had a problem with a warranted nib ever on any pen that I own and this was the first time here that I had written with one uh, that the MNC limited out of Birmingham England so anyway there you go still excellent condition after about a hundred years or so that they've been out and available um, and I, like I said I got these I thought at an excellent price $35 a piece and you, you just don't run across it. I mean put it this way this by example here was like a hundred dollars more than either one of these so I cannot complain about the price for which I got these and I'm happy with them I mean this still has a sack that works on them I didn't have to do anything to them if anything I may want to uh, you know maybe do a little deoxidation on it maybe and clean up a little bit on the on the lever or clean up just a little bit on that you know that red top um, on that finial there but you know for by and large I've got no real complaints with these two pens especially for the money I paid for them and I enjoy vintage if you're looking for vintage and if you're looking for something for which you can have a good amount of line variation in them look for vintage instead of going all nuts over the the latest and greatest modern pen look for tried and true century hold vintage Thank you.